This week in Drone News, we have four stories for you. PSI issues are resulting in flight training protests, the Perlin BV loss waiver, that's a cool story, a Bengals game man pleads guilty, and then finally, a rescue that used a drone to send a text, that's a cool story as well. Let's get to it. The first story this week is a big one for those of you that are doing any sorts of training, airplane training, aviation training, drone training. Uh, PSI, the company that currently holds a monopoly on uh, written tests for the FAA, is under fire by a large group uh, such as the EAA and AOPA and a bunch of others. Uh, in case you didn't know, at the beginning of this year, PSI decreased the fee paid to testing centers uh, for completing the exam, and they cut that by 66%, uh, resulting in basically about $22 going back to the testing center. Uh, as a result, many of the testing centers have stopped proctoring for PSI. And as we expected, this is beginning to lead into less availability for students to complete their written exams. Uh, AOPA and EAA have mentioned that PSI's customer service was less than stellar on top of all this, and that many issues were left unresolved. Uh, we actually have seen this as well with some of our students and uh, that complain about the, uh, the service that they're getting from, uh, from the company. Uh, yet, the FA refuses to stop PSI's monopoly by not allowing it to have any new applicants for the testing. So let us know if you've been impacted by these latest issues, but this is a story that we're going to keep an eye on and we'll keep you updated if anything else becomes available. Your second story this week is about the city of Perlin, Texas. Uh, that is the first to receive a waiver for their drone as first responder, also called DFR, uh, for their operation to be conducted without a visual observer, which is a really big deal. Uh, the waiver covers 49 square miles near Houston, Texas, and the population is around 125,000 people in that area. Now, if you're not familiar with this uh, premise, the uh, first responders will be able to respond to 911 calls using a drone to get immediate immediate eyes on and engage the situation uh, and direct the responding police, fire, EMS crews in order to best handle the situation. Uh, the program uses the Iris Automation K uh, Cassia G system, I know it's a mouthful, uh, as a way to meet the uh, see and avoid requirements under 91.113. Uh, now, you might be wondering why I quoted part 91, not part 107. That's because these operations are done under uh, COA for public safety, which follows part Part 91 rules. Now, I wanted to personally say a big congratulations to Brendan Carr, uh, who recently retired from the Perlin department, but uh, was uh, extremely instrumental in getting uh, all of this approved, and uh, that's a, a major accomplishment. So, uh, congrats to you, Brendan. Uh, and then your third story this week is an update on the man that flew over the uh, Cincinnati uh, Bengals game in, in 2022, and then also a man that flew over the uh, Reds game in 2022 as well. Uh, both of them have pleaded guilty for uh, illegal flights in the uh, U.S. District Courts of Cincinnati. Uh, sentencing has not been scheduled yet, but the plea deal will, uh, with the uh, federal prosecutors uh, will expect about a year of probation and then 40 hours of community service. So uh, remember to check the TFRs before you do this. Uh, don't be that guy. And if you get caught, don't be taunting uh, the FA and a bunch of other people because, uh, well, then you'll result in uh, what we just talked about right now. Your final story, this one, is one that you've likely seen, uh, one that a lot of our students have uh, sent over to us. An uh, Oregon man was uh, stuck in the snow and then used his drone to call for help. Uh, he attached his cell phone to his drone in order to send a text message, and then he flew the drone up so he could get uh, cellular service. So where he was, there was no service, decided to go up, get wider range, and then eventually get this. So uh, within a few hours, the man was found in the uh, by the Lake County uh, Sheriff's search and rescue. Uh, such an amazing use of the drone. Congrats on thinking about this. Uh, we actually, I think, had a similar story a couple years ago. Uh, I actually thought this was the same story that had resubmerged, but uh, we finally found the source and uh, were able to talk about it. So uh, that's exciting. All right, that's it. That's all I have for you this week. As always, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.